Papua New Guinea is a photographer's paradise, extending from the colorful tribes that populate the highlands to the colorful reefs off New Britain Island. In this film, we'll take a visual tour of this very remote land from both perspectives. The reefs surrounding the eastern islands of Papua New Guinea are famous throughout the diving community for their abundance of colorful corals, anemone, invertebrates, and reef fish. Let me guide you through this underwater paradise as we examine the vast array of life here. As divers descend into the clear blue water, they are often greeted by these friendly Tierra batfish, who appear to be just as curious as we are. On the next dive, we were welcomed into the water by about a dozen white tip and silver tip reef sharks. Silver tips are the larger ones, reaching five and a half feet in length. They have a white highlight extending down the back of their dorsal fins. The smaller white tips only have a white marking on the tip of their dorsal fins. When the lighting is right, Schools of Barracuda and Trevally make wonderful photo subjects. Hi, it's me again up in the highlands around Mount Hagen. Unlike the coastal societies, the highland tribes did not originally carve, paint masks, or make pottery. Instead, they concentrated on self-decoration. were warmly greeted at each village we visited. Each clan, usually less than 100 people, gathered to demonstrate cultural rituals and dances. And of course, to peddle their wares of wood carvings and knit billum bags. Tourism is the only cash crop in the remote regions. <laughs> This is a mock demonstration of tribal combat. But the real thing takes place on a continuing basis as clans go to war to settle disputes over land, pigs, and women in that order. Stories abound of tribal wars being stopped to tend to the tourists. 
only to be resumed when the tour bus departs. The children were having as much fun as we were, especially witnessing these slapstick performances. We were continually impressed with the warm, friendly atmosphere in the villages that we visited. This eerie ritual dance is being performed by the Mudmen, a very primitive tribe in the Mount Hagen region. Warriors covered with gray clay and wearing grotesque masks reveal their strange legend in dance and mime. The wooden frames are kept, but new mud is crafted on the frame for each occasion. A little humor is always in order. This the first. They were on at night and stealing food from his garden. We found him and killed him. It was our custom in the olden days when somebody do crime things, we always kill that person. Although these tribes live within 50 miles of Mount Hagen, they have little contact with and use for modern implements, including matches. The same is true for work tools and weapons, which even today are primitive bows, arrows, spears, and knives. Located north of Australia, Papua New Guinea occupies the eastern half of the island of New Guinea. It is possibly the most culturally diverse country on earth, with over 700 tribes and languages. From the capital of Port Moresby, we travel to the highlands to visit Mount Hagen and Tarry, home to the wig-wearing people of the Huli tribes. Their fantastic human hair wigs are grown over an 18-month stay at a spiritual retreat. First contact with these tribes occurred little more than 60 years ago. The people of Papua New Guinea recently entered the 20th century, skipping a few thousand years in between. We were fortunate to be able to photograph the many faces of one of the most primitive places on Earth. Diving took place in the Bismarck Sea off New Britain Island. Before boarding our boat in Rabaul, we were greeted by the daily eruption of Tverva, one of the many active volcanoes in the area. Wow, pretty spectacular. In September 1994, both Tverva and Vulcan erupted, covering the town of Rabul with several feet of ash. Thanks to an early warning system, no one was killed, but the economy of this once thriving port city was devastated. The difficulty of the situation was that uh, the runway was waving because of the continuous tremors earthquakes and it was not safe for actual runoff so we estimated that there was a 10 second interval right after two minutes of uh, earth tremors right. the moment we knew there was going to be a break we just signaled to the pilot it was all set to go Rabaul was the headquarters for the Japanese fleet under the command of Admiral Yamamoto, who planned the Pacific War from this bunker. 
For most of the population of Papua New Guinea, the destruction caused by bombs, guns, and warplanes was their first exposure to the civilized world. When they land on the beach, they send the radio up there and the prisoner walk down in the nighttime to pull all these parts on the nighttime on the rail. So that 200 meters from the water up to here, and uh, from the door to the end of the cave, 100 yards. So this cave was been uh, which was been built by the uh, Japanese uh, soldiers before the war. Thousands of Papua New Guineans served the war effort both as soldiers and as carriers. Many a soldier owed his life to these angels, as they were called, ordinary villagers who risked their lives to help the military. Our home for the week we spent exploring the reefs off New Britain Island was the Star Dancer, a 110-foot luxury yacht, and one of the most luxurious liveaboard boats in the dive industry. Entering the water from the back of the boat, we swim the short distance to the nearby Bami, or underwater seamount. Here, we'll photograph the vast diversity of sea life, including many colorful species of corals, sponges, sea fans, and whips. It's good to be back in the water. It looks like this reef is being patrolled by a school of bumped head parrotfish, who resemble a herd of grazing buffalo. Parrotfish get their name from the shape of their mouth, which resembles a beak. They use it to crunch up dead coral, sifting through the grit for small morsels of food. There are several species resident on these reefs. Moray eels have a keen sense of smell to compensate for their poor eyesight. They generally hunt at night, sniffing around for small fish and crustaceans. During the day, they pretty much stay hidden. Small fairy basslets often share a den with moray eels, gaining protection from the larger fish. Garden eels, on the other hand, spend the entire day snatching tiny plankton from the surrounding sea. They retreat to their tube-shaped holes in the sand when you try to get close enough for a good picture. This flowery flounder is a master of camouflage. At birth, 
the eyes of this flat fish are on both sides of its head, migrating to one side as it matures. The reefs off New Britain Island contain many species of anemone fish, which form symbiotic relationships with their host anemone. They bring food to their host in return for protection offered by the anemone's poisonous tentacles, to which they are immune. All clownfish mature as males. In the absence of a female, the largest male will change into a female, and the next largest male will mature to form the mating couple. Well, you never know what to expect when you come up from a dive, like a warm greeting from these curious villagers. We have had some wonderful experiences here in Papua New Guinea, so I think I'll send back a few postcards. <laughs>